may be seeing the repercussions from our unusual spring this year as far as a lot of moisture and cool temperatures, especially in the landscape for weeks to come. Now I'm at the studio gardens by one of our hackberry trees and upon closer inspection we see some of the typical insect galls that we get year after year but we're really not concerned with those because it, it distorts the leaves but it's not to the problem that they fall off. And then we'll see a few spots here and there, but again, nothing too severe. The foliage is still very dense and, and looks pretty, pretty good. Now that's not unlike the case of another landscape that we visited that has hackberry trees that are defoliating prematurely. I mean, it actually looks like the fall. Leaves are, are just dropping everywhere. And what we did, we got a closer look at those leaves and underneath the leaves we saw some light specks. Really the way it started is it turns a different color green, the specks turn, they start to turn brown then, and they coalesce, they get bigger, and then they start dropping off. And again, it's very unusual. As a matter of fact, in the four years that this homeowner has lived there, that has never occurred. So we collected up some leaves, some from the good parts of the tree, some that had already dropped, took them to our diagnostic lab that's through the extension service and they identified it as downy mildew which is a fungus disease. Now it is reported on hackberry trees but it's not that common and the reason it occurred this year is not only because of the cool spring but because of a long period of time of consistent moisture on the foliage and if you've heard probably the term downy mildew like on other things such as roses maybe viburnums and even downy mildew on the cucurbit crops in the vegetable garden and as it progresses you'll see the whitish gray color start to grow on the underneath side of the leaves instead of on the top like powdery mildew and any time it gets downy mildew it usually causes premature drop so really it's too late to spray and do anything about it because it's already occurred now chances are these particular trees that you're seeing will leaf out again this summer and the only reason you would want to spray when the new leaves come out would be if it's cool and wet. Now chances of that happening in July are not very good. So think about next year in the spring, if the leaves come out again and we have those same conditions, chances are you'll have the disease again. And the reason for that is if you see all the leaves that have dropped on the ground, that is the source of infection for next year. Those spores splash up from the ground or the wind carries them and they get on the leaves and reinfect. So again, it, it's very much environmentally controlled. Now the catch to this with this particular landscape is it's designed as a self-mulching landscape, meaning when the leaves drop in the fall normally on these trees, they just leave them and that becomes part of the mulch. But with that being the source of infection, they need to think again about what they can do. They either need to rake all the leaves up, dispose of those, burn them, or compost them, or again next spring just be careful to spray if we have the wet, cool conditions for a long period of time. So if you're out in your landscape and you're looking at the leaves and of your trees, you're going to see a lot of leaf spots and things. Again, it's normally too late to control, but if they're starting to drop, that's when you should be concerned. And just collect some samples. You need some that are just starting to turn. If they're already brown and dead, that's all they can tell you in the lab is that they're brown and dead. So collect the appropriate samples. Be sure and take them by your county extension office and find out what you're dealing with so you'll be able to prepare for it again next year when the new leaves come out.